Today we're diving into how to create a killer report. The very reason many Power BI developers excel is their process. But what's the secret of creating reports that users keep coming back to? It's about mastering DAX, design and user experience all at once. And let me tell you, it's not an easy feat. But here's the good news, there is a proven approach. I've created hundreds of reports across sales, production, HR, and I use the same process every single time. This is a proven nine steps formula that works every time. And it includes two bonus steps and some tips that some Power BI developers might ignore. By the way, this is Telian and this is my world, creating Power BI reports that work. Let's dive right in. Before you even begin with the process, there is one critical step that you need to do. This will make everything go so smoother. And it's simple. Make your plan of attack before you even meet with the stakeholders. Think of it like planning a road trip. Your destination is the report you need to create. And you know it because there is that initial contact where you're being told we need this kind of report. The map is researching what kind of data you need, the KPIs that you might need to use or what visuals. And you need to do all this, first of all, because you need to show that you know your stuff, second of all, to set expectations, and third of all, to get the better direction of your project. And here's what I like to do. Before the start of any project, there is an initial contact, be it an email or a conversation where I'm being asked, could you create a report for us? A HR one, for example. I might not know anything about HR, but I can surely learn. There is nothing wrong with asking, do you have something similar that I can inspire from? Nine times out of ten I get what I need. And from there I can see what kind of KPI they use, what kind of visuals they like to see, see other metrics, and then I either sketch a report or prepare a portfolio of similar KPIs or visuals that I can present in the next step. Which by the way, if you skip, you might build the wrong report. This is where you meet the stakeholders, define the problem to be solved and understand what is needed. Why is this so important? Because here is where you find out if you prepare the right things in the first step or not. In the grand scheme of things, this is where you should talk less and listen more. Take notes and absorb everything like a sponge. What do I do? I listen, I identify KPIs and metrics. I ask questions. What visuals do you prefer? Who will use the report? Who will have access to what? I also set expectations and say no if something is not possible. Why? Because if expectations are high and reality is low, I am set to fail. If the reality doesn't meet or exceed the expectation, then no one will use the report. And later on I'll give you some tips on how you can exceed the expectations. So you've gathered requirements and set expectations. But you need to ensure that the report is not useless and that's what next step is all about. This is the infamous step of cleaning and transforming your data. This is what can make or break your report because your report is as good as your data. Bad data means useless report. What do I usually do? I'm lucky enough to have complete access to all the data, so I can get myself data from SQL, Oracle database or sometimes a combination of both. And by having access to data, it means that I can clean and transform before it even gets to Power BI. Usually, in Power Query, all I do is change date types. But even so, it still means I need to validate data, evaluate consistency, remove duplicates, handle missing values, have standard formats. All of this just to create a data model in Power BI Desktop. But just because you have clean data doesn't mean you can use drag and drop because Power BI has its limitations. And here comes step 3 where the fun begins. When you need to perform dynamic calculation that adjusts based on user interaction, here is where Power BI default calculations fail. And that's where you need calculated measures and calculated columns. Measures and calculations add meaning to your data. Without them, you might have numbers with no insights. You just can't tell a proper story. And we all know, data analysis is about telling a good story with your data. So I usually implement calculated measures using DAX, I implement calculated columns, and I even use DAX for design purposes. Now some people use the next step as part of this one, but not me. I like to keep it separate and focus my entire attention on testing. Why it matters? Because if your calculations are wrong, the results will be wrong. If the results are wrong, the decisions are wrong. If decisions are wrong, then people will suffer. 
You see where I'm going with this, right? Grab your measures, add them to visuals, use slices, filters, export data to Excel, do all the stuff that you need to do in order to verify the results. Do what I like to call break the report. If you don't test, mistakes might go unnoticed and results will be catastrophic. Remember I said earlier that if you clean your data properly, it will pay dividends later. If your data transformation is spot on, then you'll spend less time testing. However, if you don't nail the next step, all your hard work so far will be in vain because no one will use the report. If you don't invest your time in this because you'll say, well, data will shine anyway, then you are set to fail. You might end up with a confusing report that no one wants to use. Consider this as the grand finale of a great story, the icing on the cake if you want. Choose color schemes, create backgrounds and add visuals. Make sure to add drill through, bookmarks, page navigation. Implement row level security if necessary. And all of this while keeping your design clear, readable and engaging. Now that everything looks good, you might be tempted to test your report with the audience. But if you want to avoid adding hours or days to your whole process, then here's what you should do. Set a meeting with the stakeholders and present them the progress. Why? Because if there's something they forgot or something that they might not like, now is the time to find out. This is a very good way to find out if you're on the right track or not. Remember when I said you can exceed expectations? Here's where you could do it and here's how I would do it. Let's assume you're creating a quality report and you've been asked to present the parts per million calculation. You could present the parts per million, but you could also present the defect rate. See what you did? The expectation is for you to deliver the parts per million, which you are doing, and then you add the defect rate, which exceed the expectations. Expectation, reality. On the other hand, if you're not on the right track, then you'll have to go back all the way to step 3 if you're lucky, or step 2 if you're unlucky. But if you're on the right track, then why not test again, just to be on the safe side. Make sure the filters are there and the performance is there. Tweak your measures if necessary. All of this so you can nail the next step. This is very important because this is the first contact of your report with the outer world. And you'll notice that no matter how much time and effort you put into testing, in the real world, people have a tendency to use filters that you're not otherwise using. Here's where you should ask everybody, break your report and report back if something is wrong. I guarantee there will be things that you never thought about testing. If needed, you know the drill, go back to step 3 or step 2 if necessary. If all goes well, you're one step closer to the finish. And whilst the next step might seem easiest, I can assure you it's one of the most difficult so far. This might seem easy, but it's not. No, 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 no. It's more than that. It's about setting a refresh schedule. It's about setting security clearance. It's about giving users access to the right thing. It's about training users as well. Don't assume people know how to use your reports just because they've used other reports in the past. Give them proper training help them get the most out of every report. Provide them with documentation and be ready to support them long after the report was released. And whilst you might be tempted to call it a day, let me assure you that you're not out of the wood yet. In time, reports lose performance or get dated. And let's not forget, Power BI updates every month. Maybe next month a new visual will be launched that could improve your report. A new set of functional calculation might come out and improve the performance. You need to track usage and performance and adjust and fix issues if necessary. Think of it like updating an old car. If you don't maintain it, it will break. And not to mention, businesses change, businesses needs change and you'll need to go all the way to step one and start all over again. But the best part, you've been through it, stakeholders been through it, so the second time around everything will go so much smoother. We just walked through the entire process of creating a report step by step. Preparation, initial meeting, transforming data, building measures, testing, designing the report, second meeting and testing, release and maintenance. If you miss any of these steps you will end up with a confusing and unreliable report. But if you follow this proven process, you'll end up with a powerful, accurate and easy to use report. 
And if you need inspiration for your KPI cards, I've just released a video ranking 10 of them based on the feedback that I got from my users. Be sure to check that out. And as usual, if you want early access to all of my videos, all you need to do is join the channel. Until next time, this is Telian signing off. Cheerio!